Hello and welcome to the world of astronomy. Only on the Fact Sci Guy. You are listening to Akash Vee. Today we will talk about the origin of the universe and the Big Bang. About 100 seconds after the Big Bang, the temperature would have fallen to 1000 million degrees. The temperature inside the hottest stars. At this temperature, protons and neutrons would no longer have sufficient energy to escape the attraction of the strong nuclear force and would have started to combine together to produce the nuclei of atoms of deuterium heavy hydrogen which contain one proton and one neutron the deuterium nuclei then would have combined with more protons and nucle- nucleons neutrons to make helium nuclei which contain two protons and two neutrons and also a small amount of a couple of heavier elements like lithium and beryllium one can calculate then in the hot big bang model about a quarter of the proton and neutron would have been converted into helium nuclei along with a small amount of heavy hydrogen and other elements the remaining neutrons would have decayed into protons which are nuclei of ordinary hydrogen atoms Within a few hours of the big bang the production of beryllium helium and other elements would have stopped and after that for the next million years or so the universe would have just continued expanding without anything much happening eventually once the temperature had dropped to a few thousand degrees and the electrons and nuclei no longer had enough energy to overcome the electromagnetic attraction between them they would have started combined to form atoms the universe as a whole would have continued expanding and cooling but in regions that were slightly denser than average the expansion would have been slowed down by the extra gravitational attraction this would eventually stop expansion in the some regions and cause them to start to recollapse as they were collapsing the gravitation pull off the more matter outside these regions might start them rotating slightly as the rotating region got smaller and it would spin faster just as scatters spinning on the ice spin faster as they drew their arms eventually when the region got small enough it would be spinning fast enough to balance the extra attraction of gravity and in this way that disk like rotating galaxies were born and the regions which did not happen to pick up a rotation would become an oval shaped object called elliptical ga- galaxies in these the region would stop collapsing because individual parts of the galaxy would be orbiting stably around its center but the galaxy would have no overall rotation As time went on, the hydrogen and helium gas in the galaxies would break up into small clouds that would collapse under their own gravity. As these contracted and the atoms within them collided with one another, the temperature of the gas would increase until eventually it became hot enough to start nuclear fusion reactions. These would convert the hydrogen into more helium, and the heat given off would rise to the Rise the pressure and so stop the clouds from contracting any further. They would remain stable in this state for a long time as stars light the sun, but the hydrogen in the helium and radiating the resulting energy as heat and light. More massive stars would need to be harder to balance their stronger gravitational attraction, making the nuclear fusion reaction proceed so much more rapidly that they would. use up their hydrogen in as little as a hydrogen 100 million years they would then contract slightly and as they heated up further would start to convert helium into heavier elements like carbon or oxygen and this however would not release much more energy so a crisis would occur as was described in the chapter on black holes what happens next in is not completely clear 
but it seems likely that the central region of the star will co collapse to a very dense state, such as a neu neutron star or a black hole. The outer regions of the star may sometimes get blown off in a tremendous explosion called supernova, which would outshine all the other stars in its galaxy. Some of the heavier elements produced near the end of the star's life would be flung back into the gases in the galaxy and would provide some of the raw material for the next generation of stars. Our own sun contains about 2% of these heavy elements because it is a second or third generation star formed after 5000 million years ago out of a cloud of rotating gas containing the debris of the earlier supernovas. Most of the gases in the cloud went to form the sun or got blown away by a small amount of the heavy elements collected together to form the bodies that, are, that now orbit the sun as planets like the Earth. Planets like the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Venus and others revolve around the sun. And these planets are revolved by some of the smaller bodies like moon, the earth. The moon is revolved by the earth. The moon is revolving around the earth and the titan, the satellite of Saturn revolve around it. Thank you very much. Here you were listening to a brief history of time written by Dr. Stephen Hawking, narrated by Akashri. Have a good day. Bye-bye. If you want more lectures on this book, please share and mention in the comments. Have a good day.